name of Jesus Christ. We welcome you this morning to the Greater High Street Missionary Baptist Church. We thank you for joining our virtual worship service. I don't know about you, but I am just thankful and grateful on this morning. Because we just lift our hands and tell God, thank you. Thank you for your goodness, Master. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. You've been so good and so kind to us. And so as we enter the sanctuary, as we enter the place of worship, we lift up our hearts and we give you all the glory, God, because we know it's only because of you that we're able to stand here on today. We invite you to share this video so that the gospel message can go forth, whether you're at home or on the job or sitting in your car, wherever you are. We thank you for joining us and we invite you into our worship. This is our call to worship.
going to come from St. Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 31. St. Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 31. And it reads as follows. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three to four furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, what manner of communication are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are saved? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been the been he which had redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came, saying, They that had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them, which were with us, went to the sepulchre, and found it even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and show hard to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Art not Christ to have been suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And begin that Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went. And he made it as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat and meat with them, he took bread, and blessed it, and break it, and gave to them. Verse 31. And their eyes were opened. And they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen.
Uh, but then sometimes we ask for job resumes mm -hmm. to tell whether or not, look into your history mm -hmm. to determine whether or not you will be a good employee. Mm -hmm. And those of us who have done marital counseling, mm -hmm. uh, before you, the honeymoon, before you jump into this long-term relationship, mm -hmm. we have what you call premarital counseling. All right. And we have deep and probing questions mm -hmm. about each other's experience, whether or not this will be a good fit. In essence, we want to determine mm -hmm. uh, and, and make sure that you don't marry a fool. Mm -hmm. it, it's called how not <laughs> to marry a fool. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, we tend to agree, those of us who are over 50, uh, we agree with the temptation to say beauty is in me. He says, so, he, he says, so in love, sad as could be, because a pretty face got the best of me. Then suddenly you came into my life and gave it meaning and purity life. He says, he says now, Good looks I have learned to do without. Because now I know it's love that really counts. He says that uh, if you're looking for a lover, don't judge a book by its cover. So she or he may be fine on the outside, but so untrue on the inside. Because we can walk and not really know. Crucifixion is over. Mm -hmm. uh, the betrayal is complete now. The denial has taken place. The young carpenter from Nazareth is dead. The disciples are scattered now. And here we have on this, uh, some argue that it's a seven mile stretch or an eight mile stretch northwest of Jerusalem. And then in this, this journey, uh, there appears to be an eavesdropping stranger who cares, a, a stranger on the road. The women and gardeners saw him last. Uh, they saw him as a gardener. The women saw him. But then these Emmaus disciples, uh, on their way, they saw him as a fellow traveler. He will show up in many forms based on the need in your life. And he will show up. David saw him as a shepherd. Uh, not only that, but Hebrew boys saw him as a fire chief and the fire department. Daniel saw him as a lion tamer. The question that we have this morning is in what form did, he, did you see him? Right. Was he a doctor in the sick room? All right. All right. Was he a lawyer in the courtroom? Right. How did you see him last? Was he a bridge over trouble? Oh, yeah. all right. How did you see him last? Was he a banker? When all your bills would do? Or was he a comforter? As I have had to go through this year more than ever, he became. He's a comforter in a cemetery. Oh, he's a way out of nowhere. He's a those who are watching us, my sisters and brother, how did you see him last? Amen. That's why he didn't want any images of him, because he's a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in and truth. Yes, but in also God. We yes, yes, and now when we look at this confusion that had taken place at the, at the early part of this chapter has confusion because there's an empty tomb, mm -hmm. there's a rolled away stone, and a missing body. Mm -hmm. it, it's caused confusion. And, uh, the first ambassadors of the resurrection uh, a message were well, these devoted women who were faithful to Jesus. Yeah. Now they gave the message to the 11 apostles who did not believe. Did the apostle think that the women uh, were deceived or delirious? And Peter and John ran to the tomb, and, and they found the tomb empty. So whenever there is 
confusion in the tomb and roll away strong men of missing by. And here my Jesus on this stretch to Emmaus. Uh, we find that they're returning home and they were talking because they had limited knowledge about the scripture. And Jesus had the key. When we look at this at this ball, this this journey to Emmaus is is not only is it a spiritual journey, but it is a literal journey. Mm. And on one hand, it recounts the story of these two disciples who, after the crucifixion and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, after this walk, this journey outlines for us how we can walk with somebody mm -hmm. and not knowing who they are. Right. And one of the texts, one of the movements that the text is tailored to teach us is that Jesus will seek us. He, there are lessons that we are to learn on this road. Mm -hmm. And it is not a radical uh, departure. Uh, it's a gradual lesson. And when we look at the progression of the text, we can see how Jesus starts teaching them mm -hmm. and then gradually uh, let them know who he is. Yes, sir. So he seeks us. And as a result, he did not want them to recognize him at first. Mm -hmm. Because I'm here to tell you, this on this journey, there is a progressive realization right. as to who Jesus is. Right. You can't Enroll in registration and expect graduation. You have to start at the beginning. You have to take all of the courses. And when you take all of the courses, then you're eligible for graduation. I have told you you may fail some tests along the way, but you can still pass the course. Oh, my sisters and brothers, when they didn't recognize him because he didn't want them to recognize him at first because he had a, there was a purpose in, in blinding their eyes, blinding their understanding. Uh, there is a purpose for Jesus. He's not being cruel here. Uh, his gradual revelation of himself allowed them to learn certain lessons about trusting God's promises. It, it, uh, the disciples had been told about these events many times, but they had not believed. Mm -hmm. And so this is, they have to start because if you reach graduation before, at the time of enrollment, there's stuff that you will miss along the way. Mm -hmm. That's why in the salvation process, we have justification by the blood of Jesus, and we have sanctification and glorification. And the sanctification is the process that we go through, our trials and our tribulations that we go through in order to conform us into the image of his son. So that when him who is perfect shall come, then we will be like him. That's why we don't understand why we go through things that we go through but we'll understand it better by and by. And so the events had not happened when we look at verse 14 and 15 and, and 16. Uh, we see that he is revealing himself, the glimpses of himself. Events had not happened as they had expected because they had a misplaced trust and a misplaced hope. Yeah. They had perceived the idea who Jesus was. I mean, they had a, an idea as to who he was uh, and what he had come to do and how he should do it. But when the thing did not turn out like they thought they should, then they dismissed the whole thing as a mere failure and misplaced hope. Uh -huh. But, but I'm, I want to, to tell you this morning uh -huh. that don't give up on God. All right. When things don't happen the way you thought that they would happen, don't give up on him. He has a better plan. You got a plan, but 
he has a better plan. And, and so we ought to trust him and give him time no matter how long it takes. Uh, he's all right today. And, and so, again, Jesus seeks us of uh, where we are. And then he will give us a gradual revelation as to who he is uh, because we have misplaced hopes and we have low level of faith. And, and so they heard all these reports and, and all of this, but they really uh, had a problem with that. Mm -hmm. uh, because we need to understand that he's still on the main line, mm -hmm. and, and he will be with you. Mm -hmm. But we need to understand this morning that only he who can see the invisible mm -hmm. can do the impossible. Right. You have to see it. Before you can believe it, because this is a walk of faith. Yes. You have to walk by faith yes, and not by sight. Yes. And the difference between the impossible and the possible lies in a person's determination and your knowledge. That's what it is. And nothing is impossible for those who believe. Yes, sir. Matthew 17 and 20 said the other day, Jesus said, uh, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, not down this mountain or the past mountain, but the mountain that you're dealing with. Yes, sir. Or somebody dealing with the mountain. Yes, sir. And so all you have to believe that he will move this mountain. Yes, sir. That he will move from here to there. Yes, sir. And it will move and nothing will be impossible. But you have to believe. And this is what he's establishing. He's establishing a belief system with him. That's why my hope. And that's why I come Sunday after Sunday and Wednesday after Wednesday and in between time because I have a hope. Yes. I have a lively hope. My hope is filled yes. on nothing less than yes. Jesus' blood and righteousness. Yes. I ain't trusting no sweetest friend. The only, the only hope that I have is in him and I dare not trust yes. the sweetest friend but holy lean yes. on Jesus' name. Yes. Looking at verse 25. But then he said unto them, O fool, and will and so hard to believe all the prophets have spoken. Because they've given him a litany, a chronology of the events that had taken place, because they didn't know that that they were in the dark, walking with the light. They were walking in the way, walking with the way. And, but they did not understand that their eyes were blind. Yeah. And so now being here now, uh, when they are, uh, he's calling them old fools, so hard to believe all that the prophets have spoken. They didn't believe it. Um, some believed and some did not believe. And so then he began to deal with them through Old Testament theology. He began to open up the scripture to them, uh, beginning at Moses. And you know, Moses wrote the first five books. And that's what he started at Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's where he started. And, and I wish I could have been there as he, as he opened the scripture and, and Jesus talking about Jesus. My rock talking about my rock. And my weary land talking about rock in a weary land. And my way talking about my way. My shelter in time of the storm. Jesus talking about Jesus. Because you have to understand that the Bible is Christ centered. And Christ is cross centered. Because he said in Hebrew uh, 10 and 7, the writer of Hebrew 10 and 7 said, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, mm -hmm. I, from Genesis to Revelation, it's about the book. I come in the volume of the book. Uh -huh. Everything in the book is about me. The book is Christological. Uh -huh. It's about Christ from Genesis to the Revelation. Uh -huh. Oh, I wish I could have been that. Yeah. He was talking about the law. But I'm the fulfillment of the law. Yes, sir. It was me that the scripture was pointing to. I am the object. I am the one who they talked about. Mm -hmm. I wish I could have been that. Oh, if I could have heard him talking about himself. Oh, I would, have been, I would have been concerned about listening hard when he talked about the rainbow in the sky. 
No more water, no more fire, water, but fire the next time. I, I would have been, I would been listening hard when he talked about uh, that ram that was caught in the thicket. Abraham on his way up to Mount Moriah to sacrifice his son Isaac. And the old preacher said that as Abraham and Isaac are going up one side of the mountain, that Jesus was going up the other side of the mountain. And he was the ram that was caught in the thicket. That, that he was one, that the lamb that was uh, that was crucified from the foundation of the world. I would have wanted to hear him talk about the Hebrew boy yes, uh, in the fiery furnace. Yes, that he was the fourth man yeah. in the fiery furnace. I wanted to hear him yes, talk about Job. Yes, Should I know that my Redeemer lives? Yes, and in that latter day, he shall stand upon the earth. Yes, and though my skin one shall destroy this body, yes, yet Job says in my flesh yes, shall I see God. Yes, but I wanted to hear him talk about the stone. Yes, that he was a stone that the builders reject. Yes, and now have become the head of the corner. Yes, yes, sir. What an awesome God we serve. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes. As we continue this journey to Emmaus, it reminded me of my two younger children as we were traveling when we got enough money to travel. <laughs> <laughs> We would, they would be sitting in the back. Nick and Danny would be sitting in the back. Just uh -huh. Morris and I would be in the front. Uh -huh. And as the evening shade would appear, Nicky would raise up and say, Are we there yet? <laughs> Mama would say, Don't be so impatient. We're going to get there. Uh -huh. okay. And so we go on maybe hundred or so miles later. later you can see in the distance the lights of a city. Oh, nice. Not the one of destination, but the city. <laughs> She's raised up. She said, over there again? <laughs> but here we are. We arrive now in Emmaus. And when we got to Emmaus, Jesus acted as if he would pass on by. But the word says that they constrained him not to pass on by, but they invited him in. You would invite him into your home. Yes. If you invite him into your life, he will come in yes. and sup with you. And yes. you with him, and uh, you will be the guest, and he will pick up the hopes. Oh, he'll come. All you have to do is just invite him in. Oh, he just warmed that heart. It's something about the intimacy of fellowship. Uh, it reminds me that, you know, in the intimacy of fellowship, it was this supper. Because you remember from the last supper, but he revealed himself. And so in this supper, he revealed who he, who he was, who he is, and who he shall be. It's the intimacy that you have with him. Oh, well, they talk about how big, well, big mama and big daddy and Mom and dad, but you have to have that intimacy. You have to know it for yourself. Yes. And then it is in this intimacy, it is in table fellowship mm -hmm. that he revealed his person, he revealed his provision, and he revealed his protection. Mm -hmm. It is the intimacy of fellowship because what God was preventing these two disciples from recognizing Jesus to convey a deeper truth. Mm -hmm. This is the key. If, if we were to see uh, still we would believe. But he wants us to trust the scripture. He wants us to see him in the scripture. And he tells us about who he is. It's the truth of the spirit of the, of the, of the, of the scripture that he wants us to understand. Roma 10 17, here he is. Uh, Paul was writing to us and he says that uh, it is by faith Faith coming by hearing, yes, and hearing yes, by the word of God. Yes, and so he wants us to trust the word of the scripture. And outside of the word of God, there is no reliable witness as to who Jesus is. Right. So the scripture tells us the truth about Jesus. Because John uh, 16 and 31 says, if you don't listen, to, if you didn't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't be persuaded by one coming from the dead. Right. John 1 and 45, Philip told, found 
and they came and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law. And so, and so did the prophet Jesus, the son of Joseph of Nazareth. John 5 and 46 says, For if you believe Moses, you would believe me, because he wrote about me. And so he wants us to believe the scripture and not somebody that's coming from the dead. And so if you want a knowledge of Jesus Christ, it's in the scripture. Yes. That's what he wants us to understand. And so we must, I would rather walk with Jesus in the dark uh, than to walk alone in the light. Mm -hmm. I would rather walk with him by faith mm -hmm. than to walk alone by sight. Mm -hmm. I'm just about there. Mm -hmm. uh, but my sisters and brothers, take this with you. That Jesus is seeking us. Yes. Number one. Mm -hmm. He seeks us. There's a song that we used to sing. Uh, years ago we had stopped singing because it wasn't it wasn't biblical. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for my Jesus. Y'all mm -hmm. remember how this old church? Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. sound good. Mm -hmm. and come down this aisle. And we had to stop from singing. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't biblical. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for my Jesus. Mm -hmm. Way out mm -hmm. on me.
friends get sick, he'll be right there by your side. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Listen to us and it's outside of that heart will say today. All you have to do is just believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Amen. And that He has died for your sin. They crucified Him. Against the dead. Thank you. The power of the Holy Spirit. The power of God raised you up. Yes. On this Sunday morning because He got up. Because He lives. Yes. Walk with you. Whatever it is that you're going through or are living with us, he'll walk with you through them. He'll get in your walk with you. Yes, thank you, Lord. When friends walk away, families leave you. They'll never leave you or forsake you. This is a good way to go. Yes. He says, I stand at the door and knock. Yes. And if any, any man hear my voice and open up, yes. I'll come in and so, Delta Family Medicine Residency. 
that's here in our neighborhood. Again, Tuesday, April 13th, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We thank you for the word of God and for the opportunity to praise you in your house. And we just give you honor and glory. We ask, Father, that you would continue to shine your light on each of people to keep us and to protect us in every way, God. We know that we can do nothing without you. And in you, there is no failure. So we thank you, God. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And we thank you for the opportunity just to know you. Stay with us and keep us in your loving arms. We'll be so ever careful to give you all the honor, all the glory, and the praise. And may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, and the love of Jesus Christ, may it rest you abide henceforth now and forevermore. In Jesus' sweet name, we say amen and amen. Yeah. <laughs>